Welcome back to the Libertarian Christian Roundtable, where we take a crack at discussing the news of the day of the last few weeks uh, from a Libertarian Christian perspective. I have Norman, Matthew, and Carrie with us, with me, and we are going to talk about the thing that everybody's talking about right now, and that is the mute button. Strawberry. Oh. Nope. Nope. So, Matthew, you, you actually watched the debate. And uh, the, the third debate, which, you know, there was for a while, there was like, is this even happening? Are they going to do it, you know, over Zoom or, you know, are they going to have like enclosed plexiglass boxes or whatever? But the one feature that was <laughs> new was the mute button, which I want you to talk about. But just generally, what was your overall impression of watching the debate? Before I get into this, uh, I do want to quickly do some stress management and light my <laughs> candle so that uh, anything that may happen i'll have beautiful smelling autumnal smells okay well you know after after all of the crap that came out of thursday night it's gonna need it to clean up that room well <laughs> i told my my dad i said are you going to watch the debates because i'm taking notes for lci uh <laughs> and he said well pfft, should I? I mean, it, last one was kind of pointless. The VP one was okay, I guess. But this one, uh, how do we know? I said, there are going to be so many new things coming out here that I think it's going to be worth it. And it might be rather explosive. Didn't turn out to be explosive, but we did have the mute button and we did have the laptop that was been, uh, you know, the, the laptop heard around the world. Is that what you're doing <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that could come out. Uh, frankly, I was just waiting for Trump to stroll out there and say, "Hey, big guy, how's it going?" Uh, but it didn't happen. But he did. He did say, big man, "You're the big man, right? You're the big man." Anyway, uh, but it was a fascinating um, uh, whole debate. They weren't. They said they weren't going to talk about foreign policy or anything like that. But that quickly divulged into what the candidates wanted to talk about. And I think any moderator at this point for any presidential campaigns need to realize that they're not really in control of the thing because because <laughs> candidates i mean they go through long processes of training for debates they learn how to that's a great question i'm going to answer that question right after i answer what i want to answer uh, yeah. And that's how those things go. And that's kind of how it went here. And you did time. that with a, with a particular accent, but it goes for both sides. For mm -hmm. both sides. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, this was Republican and Democrats who do the, do the same thing. So everybody was on the edge of their I mean, seats. I'm sure Matthew, I'm sure Matthew could do the same thing that Joe just like, I'm talking to you now, the American people. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. No, nope. really squint. Hey, Hey, but come on, come on. Yeah. Come on. Wait, 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 hey, where'd you go? Where'd you where, go? <laughs> listen, that's the thing. Come on. Gary, we're out. We're, we're yeah, in we're, I know. I think we're, anyway. So, yeah, but, yep, yep, no. yep, yep, yep. so the, the question was the mute button. And I think everybody was waiting for Trump to make a really strong point and then. <laughs> <laughs> the censorship. So. So that, that didn't happen, and so we're very glad that it didn't because the, the only things that they really muted on was like uh, Joe would start talking, he would say, and that's what I thought. <laughs> like, did he stroke out there? Because he could have. <laughs> Just about. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just about. But uh, it was very fascinating, very entertaining, uh, and this is probably the one and only debate I'll ever watch ever again. So. Well, I until, watched the first Until the next election, which will be the most important of our lifetime. Right, and then we'll have to go through this whole rigmarole again. Yeah, right. but I, I watched the first two debates, and and I watched. I was able to watch clips of this third debate uh, since I was busy on Thursday night. But the, the the first thing that I sort of observed is that first of all, I did not hear any of the mute button nonsense and whatever that was supposed to happen there. Uh, so, to what, yeah, what I, however that ended up working, I I'm not really that aware. That's why I was really curious about it because uh, I. I I think it, it was an interesting addition, but it also didn't seem nearly as entertaining as the first debate. And I know that a lot of people were like, oh, it was a disgrace or what, you know, whatnot. And, and perhaps it was, but it was also maybe one of the most entertaining debates I've ever seen uh, in presidential. Yeah. And, and in part because of it shows it displayed the farcicalness of the system. And, uh, you know, that this is that this is what they're resorting to in order to try and, and, and beat down the other person. 
if I could offer a perspective oh. on this. Well, that's why you're I, here. I <laughs> actually think that that debate went exactly how Trump wanted it to go. Oh, yeah. Because he was totally in control. <clears throat> what, what, what people in the country and ourselves and others around the nation have to understand that debates are not necessarily for us to get information about the candidate. That's yeah. what we would like it to be. That's the collegiate right. sense of what, we, what it should be. But what it actually is, is, or at least for what that debate was, how can I, candidate A, get my candidate B, my opponent, to, uh, to disassociate with their base? How mm -hmm. can I trip him up so that <clears throat> they don't vote for him? Yep. That was the hmm. point of the debate between Trump and Biden in the first round. And Trump, if you look at it under that guy's, he won it. Yeah, from a practical politics perspective, I think that you have to conclude j exactly that, that yeah. he, he went in to make Joe Biden look as weak as possible. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he more or less did. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can call Trump as petty as you like, and, and indeed he is, but, uh, and he's, a, you know, and don't get me wrong, of course, he's terrible, uh, he's a terrible person. But what well, he's he did, gonna, he's going to win no matter what. And that's what he's got his sights on. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. He, is, he was zeroed in on mm -hmm. trying to, a, on sh proclaiming a kind of vision of strength mm -hmm. in opposition to Biden as a man of weakness. Mm -hmm. And overall, there were some, Biden did come out swinging on a couple of things and uh, that, that did work in his favor. But overall, that did not go well for, for Biden. And it went very well for Trump in that regard. So what do you guys think about how Biden will, you know, when during that, well, during those debates, he'll look into the camera and start talking to the American people? Because I've noticed that there's a lot of my, a lot of my friends and followers on social media who are leaning towards Biden, look at that moment where he's, you know, looking in the camera, talking to the American people as you know, a sign of strength or, or humanity or whatever. So how does that play into, you know, this idea that, that Trump is presenting himself as, as stronger than, than the weak Biden? That wasn't a sign of strength. That was a sign of very good pharmaceuticals. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. At, at least one of those was a point was at which I felt past. like he was, he was coming out strong on mm -hmm. and in and as long as he stays coherent and on message in his own way at that moment that's when he looks good mm. uh, the moment that he begins to kind of trail off or begins right. to lose that coherency then it's it is the same sort of thing that that as as though i'm speaking directly to you uh, I'm like, I'm trying to, to, you know, to, to zero in on your eyes, you know, mm -hmm. and, and make that kind of connection. And the moment that I break that and I kind of lose, I start, I begin to lose that authenticity. So mm -hmm. I would say that there's that, that it's a possible strong point of his presentation, even that night, uh, even though I think most of us probably realize that, you know, it's, it's very phony anyway, but it appears authentic in a particular way. I mean, they, they keep doing this because it does appeal to their base mm. in, in a certain way. What I yeah. don't think it will do um, is do the, do the reverse and, and, and kind of what Matt was describing momentar a moment ago with respect to uh, appealing to the, to the other side's base. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that necessarily uh, makes that case well. Right. But, it's, but, but I, could, I could be wrong there. Um, but again, I think that's where that's where Biden did come off as strong at, at points, and I I think that actually and this is prior to the Hunter revelation. Uh, he his uh, defense of his own family in that moment actually did kind of come off well um, mm -hmm. in in the first debate. Yeah. Now, in the second or in the third debate, rather, I think it it it's uh, it's getting awkward, and and I don't know all the details regarding every bit of info that's come out 
from this whole revel the hunter biden revelation yeah. but uh nor have i seen all the clips so i don't want to speak out of turn but uh i don't i would imagine that that if that came up it was going to get rough <laughs> mm. <clears throat> yeah i i guess i don't know i'm sort of torn about why people why his base would even see his you know looking into the camera and talking directly to them um as being a strong like every time i've seen any candidate do this so this isn't just biden right lots of candidates do this they yep. try and you know <clears throat> what's that what's that theatrical eye contact about is breaking all, the is wall everything. eye contact what's, is everything carrie yeah breaking the third wall breaking the third wall so they the sort of wall. do Fourth is wall, it the fourth whatever. wall? Yeah, Breaking the fourth wall, they sort of do that, right? And try and connect with the audience. But to me, it always comes off as as dis disingenuous performing. Like, well, okay, I, I understand where you're going with that, um, and I agree with you uh -huh. to a large extent. However, where I would try to modify or maybe give you a little bit of extra. Uh, things to think about is with regards to you are specially trained in a way to not believe politicians. <laughs> this so, is true. You are, so you are primed. <laughs> yeah. You are primed to look at that and say, you, sir, are a phony. Okay. Oh, However, yes. you have you to have think about this. Because it's both. Well, I mean, this is actually, this is a challenge for the, sir, for some of us as, as let's just say highly, we'll call ourselves highly trained libertarians. And I mean, okay. libertarians in general consider uh, much more skeptically the behaviors and activities and words. Our BS anyone. detector is very, very sensitively too. Right, right. That's right. So, so, but we have to think about this from a slightly different point of view. And this is why I say from a practical politics perspective. So mm -hmm. how am I, or how am I reading into what the candidate or the policy or whatever it is, is doing in order to make a, or to, to garner support uh, of an electorate or so on and so forth. Because that's all, always what they're trying to do. And wh while we do not, are, do not necessarily fall for the same tricks per se, uh, I, I'm not, it, it, it would be not exactly be fair to say that everybody else is just stupid or something, but rather like there is a, a way in which those who are more accustomed to playing the game mm -hmm. are going to respond to it. Mm -hmm. I would like to believe you, Norman, but I already don't. So okay. I've been trained that. <laughs> oh, if right. I, oh, you know what? Okay, okay, I get it. So, <laughs> thanks. Sorry. That was very meta. Thank you. <laughs> that was pretty meta. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, if I can offer another perspective, look at my mouth, how huge it gets. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. You look are at a big this mouth. mouth. It's huge. <laughs> Sorry. So, speaking of non sequiturs, we need to transition to the background that I have on my screen and the transition. connection. Well, it was about non sequitur, so I could yeah, say whatever so, I wanted. Yeah. Um, so, that's, kind of, that's kind of like a zero to one, you know, yeah, <laughs> scale the wall transition. Well, I, I, I couldn't Did figure you know. out how to come from whatever you just said to the other topic on the day, which is like, we're all the talking perspective about- Perspective on coyotes. We're all on. talking about coyotes. And then perfectly. you you threw in the whole magnified, like, I, I don't even understand. So. I, I had nothing. Coyote. So we're just going to go with what I did. So anyway, <laughs> you've got your eyes on us. So uh, have you, and so Carrie explained to me earlier today that there's this, there's many memes going around uh, that, regarding coyotes and, uh -huh. and <laughs> it was the debate and you actually knew what this meant. So uh, set the stage here. What, what is the, uh, cause she lives on the border. <laughs> well, not quite on the border. <laughs> what, it, it just baffled me that so many people did not know what Donald Trump meant when he said the word coyote. Yeah, well, for the record, I didn't watch the debate, but I saw the memes coming out and I was like, what? Like, what's this coyote <laughs> reference? Something so must be happening. <laughs> I go look it up and, oh, we're, we're talking about um, cages on the border and children in cages and something about immigration. Who built the cages, Joe? Who built and, the cages? And, and, you know, poor children coming across the, the, uh, the border because of coyotes. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, <laughs> really? Like, that's, that's what we're talking about? Well, uh, you know, come to find out there's a lot of people that thought that Trump lent, meant a literal animal coyote. Okay, but um, seriously, though, hands up. Who didn't really know that a coyote in terms of the border wasn't really talking about the animal coyote, 
Raise your oh, hand. Oh, I've now. known that for years. I've watched yeah, Men that's... in Black. So exactly. Right. Like, who doesn't like, know like that this is a term? Know this. this is, yeah. So that was the weird thing. Well, and then others were saying, oh, that was racist because he's talking about immigration and these poor children in cages because, you know, who built the cages? Uh, um, <laughs> Oh, well, it is racist because coyotes are a different animal. So, <laughs> so you know, at any rate, I had to. I, I made a post just pointing out, uh, guys, this is a real term. It means real thing. It's you know, people get hired either to traffic children across the border, or like parents will hire people to, you know, take their children across the border to try and give them a better life. Uh, so it can be used either way. Um, but at any rate, yeah, that was that was the crazy thing about coyotes, and so now it's now it's a meme. This just goes to show how people are, and again, I don't I don't want to make this as as like a defend Trump kind of thing, but like some people will go will like go head over heels trying to make someone look stupid, and not real. I mean, I've done this. I've been like, ah, yeah. oh, look at the blah, 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 and then my wife has to point out to me. So <laughs> I think the joke's on you now. So yeah. it's just like. Um, you know, some people just, you know, hatred goes a long way and, and it can make us do like stupid things and we can get ahead of ourselves. Well, and I think, you know, if he wasn't talking about immigration, but was talking about human trafficking and knew a term that was related to human trafficking, would they have praised him for it? Like, <laughs> that's a it's, interesting question. Yeah. Not a chance. <laughs> no, I, no, I'm sure, I'm sure they wouldn't have, but uh, like what i don't know it's it seems so it just so here's the thing to me i didn't understand i'm like really people don't know that that's what they're called like especially people on the left and who who are allegedly who i live in pennsylvania and know everything yeah. <laughs> right i live in pennsylvania yeah. i i mean the the yeah it's just like i'm like i understand this i've seen yeah. movies i like come on like i just yeah. it just it boggled my mind that nobody Nobody understood what, what that I, was. No. I would love to see an intersection of knowledge of people uh, who normally knew how to spell the word coyote versus people who were just Googling it at the time of the past couple of weeks. Because <laughs> it doesn't make any it. sense. C-O-Y? I mean, really? <laughs> Come on, English language. Get it together here. Oh, indeed, indeed. To, All be, right. fair, it's, to be fair, it's pronounced coyote. <laughs> She's on the border. Oh. Yeah. Wow. It's actually for now, like it's spelled. It's freaking American. Although we, although we yeah. would Americanize that. Oh, what's that called? Coyote? Yeah, we're gonna call it coyote. So yeah, yeah. we're gonna call it. <laughs> this, rem this reminds me of, of of an old of a talk that was given years ago, uh, and and I'm I'll, I'll get to that in a sec, but I do want to because uh, I I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that, but I want to I want to ask Matt. Regarding this particular thing that happened during the, the debate about yeah. coyotes, what was what was kind of the context and, and Trump's point to make there? Uh, it, was, it, it wasn't uh, well. It first started out by Biden actually uh, deriding Trump for separating families at the border, right. putting kids in cages. I mean, we've heard those liberal lines uh, in the past, yeah, uh, of course. and and Trump saying who built the cages, Joe, and all that kind of stuff, and he's saying, uh, you know the the kids that are separated at the border uh are not usually from the parents because yeah some of the kids are trafficked some of the kids were kidnapped some of the kids were sent by parents you know not necessarily it's it's not this uh liberal dreamland where you've got uh mom dad and kid just trying to struggle across to, to get to the border right. and run across and then all of a sudden INS is there to stick a gun in their face. It's, yeah. it's people packing kids in crates and vans and putting them in the hiding spots of trucks and shipping yeah. them across the border. And then the kids there and, you know, they, they have to put the kids somewhere. Uh, oh, I, yeah, I get it. So here's, here's yeah. then the question. Did, did Trump, then get, launch into why we need a bit like easier immigration access or anything like that that would actually fix this problem that would have been great I'm guess i'm gonna i'm gonna guess yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna i'm gonna answer the question for question? you yeah. i'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. answer the question for you and the answer is no no uh he yeah. did not because no. that's not what they care about and no. see that's that's the irony of of all of this is that is that whether or not you're talking whether you're talking to the liberal who says oh well the kids shouldn't be in a cage 
Mm -hmm. or you're talking to the conservative who says, well, they just shouldn't be here in the first place. Uh, you are not getting down to the root of the issue, which is Im actual real immigration reform yeah. that allows for easier access. And, and it, this is where I'm going with this. Okay. The, the, I'm citing a, an old talk that was given at the Christians for Liberty conferences mm. uh, back in, I believe this one would have been 2013 with David Simpson, who was a representative in Texas at the time. Uh, who came, who's represented from Longview, Texas, is a friend of mine. We worked on the TSA, uh, stopping the TSA stuff together back in 2010 and 2012. And uh, he's a great man. I, I called him the Ron Paul of the Texas legislature. And he gave a talk at CFL specifically about immigration. Now imagine, imagine a Republican in giving Texas. A, in Texas giving a positive talk yeah. about immigration in the first place. That's yeah. strange, okay, mm -hmm. already. Uh, but this man is so good that he actually, even in his own district, stood up to his own constituents and said, told them off when, when uh, basically when, when they uh, w were trying to, uh, to de denigrate uh, immigrants and whatnot, uh, in, in as much as he could at the time. And, and one of the, the great points that he made is, look at what these people are doing. Their children are, be are being... Uh, <laughs> trafficked over the border mm -hmm. by parents who are doing the best that they possibly could to just say like, it is better for them to be away from me, mm -hmm. away from their hometown, home city, whatever, and go with a stranger to go into a country that they may never have been to where they yeah. might get held up. And it's better there than here. So now, if that doesn't say something about yeah. what, about, about the, the, dare I say the goodness that we have here mm -hmm. and that the way in which that if we were to be more open to, to free and peaceable people moving freely, which is a human right, then how much better off we would all be. And, yeah. and that, and of course the, the, uh, the, the, the data is so much in the preponderance of immigration is good. It's a, it is a net good yeah. on, you know, for all, for we should, all. We should promote a book that like spells a little oh. bit of that out. Oh yeah, and, and I was going to say, didn't and if you want, like beyond learning more about this by going and listening to David Simpson, which I think we could probably link to that in our show notes here and whatnot. Uh, but we'll we'll make sure it gets there. Uh, I think there's something else that's coming out that might be useful yeah, for that. There's a book. Doug. There's a book. I'll Photoshop in the cover when we're when you know later. <laughs> we, can do that. <laughs> we don't. We don't. We don't. Uh, we don't have the book. Uh, <laughs> to hold right now. Put your frame. Uh, <laughs> but the no, book right all now. my diatribe but here you don't have a you don't have a, a an image you can just like bring up and share I, I, I come got on a, I got an come image. on uh, there we go <laughs> there we go there hey go. there, there go. it is yeah. how about that how about that so this is our new book fellas this is not about immigration but this is a good segue if only there were a yeah. book um yeah so <laughs> we we've got a new book coming out very soon um it's sometime in the month of november it will get released you can pre-order it on kindle uh, it's easy to remember where you can get it. It's faithseekingfreedom.com, and you can learn all about what you can do to pre-order it uh, and all, all that kind of jazz. So that- All I know is I'm in a tiny box up in the right-hand corner, and I'm wondering if people can see me. <laughs> this is not about you, Matt. <laughs> now, now it's, it's, <laughs> it's important to remember right now that, of course, you can, can pre-order the Kindle version right now for 99 cents, which is terrific. And if you- do that right now you may be able to help us compete in the new releases with the likes of people like john hagee or rod Dreher or, or matthew, matthew McConaughey, McConaughey. <laughs> who has a book out matthew McConaughey, and, really that's yeah. great all right all right all right all right yeah. all right, all right. <laughs> i was actually listening to some of that uh, he gave a couple of interviews and it, uh, it actually sounds like a pretty interesting book so anyway yeah, yeah what we, we're looking for is about a hundred people from the dallas area to buy our book <laughs> and we could call you the dallas buyers club <laughs> very good very good excellent well, that's great and, and and it is true that like that that uh, it does help out a lot if you pre-order the kindle edition uh yeah. getting at the top of the new release <laughs> chart is is really great yeah and, and if we could if we could hit the top of the religion charts oh my goodness on yeah, amazon that'd be that'd be great. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Yes. uh so the, the the 99 cent kindle price is a pre-order and maybe launch week price yeah. that's it and then it's going to go to 9.99. There is going to be a physical soft cover. I was pretending to hold something up because it, I did. I, I don't want the joke to think that I was like, oh, I'm holding up a Kindle book, which I can't do. Uh, <laughs> it will be a soft cover book. It will also be an audio book. Uh, and yeah. so you can, um, 
you can order it or pre-order it on Amazon. Faith Seeking Freedom. We'll put up the book cover a little bit later as well, just because I want to keep doing that because we're so proud of this book. Um, and so it's what's interesting to me, we've been talking about the debates, we've been talking about like people misunderstanding things like the, coy the coyote thing. Seriously, I'm just like, <laughs> I laugh at that every time I thought about it since you told me, Carrie, today. Uh, <laughs> I was just like, I can't believe people did that. Um, they and are our version of the stork. You would think, yeah, right. You would think. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> I, I tripped up there. Interrupting my in, my transition. Sorry. <laughs> You're doing a good job. Keep it up, Doug. <laughs> oh my goodness. So it's one of those things where, okay. So Matthew, just remind yes. me, how many people are up on the debate stage? There were two people, Douglas. Two people, two, two yeah. men, right? Two white men. Uh. Two white old men rich i don't want to be ageist right yeah two yeah. white rich old men um is that all we got like is this i i don't i don't know why i don't know what the standards are for getting another person up on the debate stage uh, but it seems like we have two choices right or no no we why have <clears throat> more than two choices <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that the way. best picture of Kanye West. He ever. looks like he's upset that you put his picture up on our. Like, oh. I know. <laughs> he's like, Rrr. and just for, the sake, of, just for the sake of, just for the sake of, I don't want to have to deal with YouTube issues. Please pull that down because I don't know if they're going. <laughs> to I'm just saying, get the thumbnail real quick. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, no, All right, Douglas. Uh, there no, are no, more. Not. There are more than uh, than one uh, or two choices. There are. Let's see here. We have 1,222 candidates that you can choose from. So don't feel like you're stuck uh, wait, 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 picking wait, wait. the what? Republican. The de you can choose from 324 Democratic candidates, 164 Republican candidates, 65 Libertarian candidates, and 23 Green candidates. And nobody for really president about them. For president. So wait, Holy crow. but here's the names. thing: like that's a lot. Are those like people who did run and they're not running anymore? Got on the ballot? Like what is this list? I just saw Adam. These Kirby. are people who registered to My be name's part of the presidential uh, uh, election of 2020. So. Uh, they may not be on the official ballot, but who goes by those anyway? You can write any of these names in right here. What if we right just write, write you Matthew Bell? Colleen Wilkinson. Colleen Wilkinson. <laughs> she's a Democrat. Uh, or Colin Pillsbury. Pillsbury. He's unaffiliated. If you poke his belly, he goes. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, isn't it the case that. You need to apologize. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Isn't it the case that, uh, that, that like Mickey Mouse has historically been one of the most voted in third like uh, candidates written or write-in yeah. candidates <laughs> is it well at this point all all the two votes are i mean goodness mickey Mouse. might as well might as well, be. Yeah, might as well be whenever i go through a list of people i'm always looking for the most uh, uh egregious names like david john sponheim sponheim uh oh, or well, we got jones jefferson nosbaum 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 <laughs> that sounds good uh, we call him oh. nosebomb Here's a good one. Panagopoulos. Pan, wait, Panagopoulos. Yeah, Panagopoulos. Yeah. I, I mean, I just find Greek names funny. I was so. going to yes. say that's Greek names. Okay. Name. So why is it that we don't see the public talk? I mean, even I, mean, I don't watch like standard cable news or anything like that. And I do typically notice that when, when I do see things, I see that they are like, hey, who are you voting for? And it's like, you know, the Republican, the Democrat, and the Libertarian, and the Green Party kind of make it into some of the stats that they throw up, but they don't talk about the fact that there's more than two. I mean, I don't know who you guys are voting for in 2020, but I'm voting for Geetha Rathnamala. So there you go. Might as well. I mean. Yeah, but then you'd be taken away from a vote away from Trump or Biden. Or oh. taking a vote away from Gloria LaRiva. <laughs> right you know or this whole like take away Goodman. okay matthew you can i'm sorry <laughs> this whole thing about <laughs> it's it late and i'm getting punchy so yes, i'm sorry i know yes <laughs> somebody spike your punch um calm down. <laughs> <laughs> yes calm down uh what was i gonna say oh the the whole time. idea of like oh but if you if you vote third party you might as well just vote for and then what they say is like the other guy right the guy that right. they're right. voting for sure. it's like it's the yeah, that's candidate. the whole point is that yeah. i'm taking a vote away from somebody yeah mm. 
when I vote for A, I'm not voting. That's a zero, that's what the zero sum game is all about. I mean, you're yeah. going to lose to James Pepe, uh, one way or not. You're going to lose to him. He's. Well, I think it's it's fascinating that you know I, I'm told on one side that if I if I vote for a, you know if I vote for a third party, then it's a vote for Trump. I'm also then by and I'm I'm told that by you know say a, a leftist friend, and I, I'm told by my friend on the right that a vote for the third party is a vote for Biden. So, okay, uh, that's okay, that's cool. But then, and then I say, well, what if I don't vote? Well, that, that's a vote for the other side too. So no matter who I vote for, apparently, it's voting for the other guy. Right, well, and if you- so if, In if, other words, if, I'm voting for everybody at yeah. once. Yeah, and, and add to Ooh. that, add to that the idea, the idea <laughs> that if you vote for somebody who can't win, then you're not credible anymore. Yeah, so Carrie, what's, well, then what's the deal look- there? Like- isn't there wasn't there like a tweet that you shared with us earlier that's like yeah there's a tweet matthew did you say you had that or do i need to pull that up you Um, might need to pull that while you're finding that i'm just gonna say we could all vote for john david mcafee come on down (laughs) all righty um i don't know that i can pull it up and basically you know there was a blogger on on uh twitter that i saw who asks this question and i'm paraphrasing here but he says you know, can we really take, um, or somebody who votes for someone who can't win, can we take them, uh, or, or do they lose any sort of credibility when- Here, I'll pull it up. You know, oh, good. Doug's, Doug's going to pull it up. <laughs> Thank you. If you vote for a political candidate, you know will not win, rather than a political candidate uh, could who could win, win yeah. should you carry the same credibility when you later critique the candidate who actually does win. You were in the po- position to, to do something about it and did not. Like This is completely this gift, I'm, really funny. I'm gonna have to take a moment to really absorb that that lo- that logic there. I'm just- Well, but, this is and, a casualty of Twitter upping their number of characters. But, here's, but <laughs> here's the thing, here's the thing is later, like down below in the thread, he says something like, um, uh, I don't know if I can some- find exactly what you're looking for there. Yeah, no, it's okay. He says something about how he's open to voting for a third party, but there's been, there we needed a workable third party decades ago, and I'm just but, like, hmm. what does a workable third party hmm. mean anyhow? Let's I, I, see. Right. When, how long have we had a third party? I'm like, jeez. I'm like, yeah, we've you've we've got had- 1,222 candidates to uh, to choose from. I mean, get, pick one. Well, and we do have pick we two. even have. We even have, I mean, I'm sitting here thinking of the Libertarian Party, right? Which has been around since the 70s. Um, But we have, you know, the Constitutional Party and the Green Party and this party and that party. And, you know, there's there's even new parties coming up as we speak. And it's like, really a workable new party? Can we talk about why there isn't a workable new (laughs) third party? Uh, um, We can also just start now with that workable third party. It's not like it's just going to... Ooh, here, here's a party like it does get right. built up so, it doesn't just yeah. pop out of thin, right thin so air. in 2044 or whatever that year you know how that'll work i guess 2044 they could say hey you know what two and a half decades ago there was a we, we we're so thankful we had a workable third party what, right. wait wait we've got a perfect opportunity here folks you want yeah. to start a new party to find liberty and freedom the kanye west party it's right here <laughs> <laughs> it's available to us it's now it's hip it's happening okay. it's got t-shirts i'm just saying well he does seem to well he has All some right. supports of weird some weird stuff but it is it is interesting too that that even in what this guy's logic entails so okay if i vote for the the uh the candidate that can't win so for instance if i happen to be in say let's what's what's a good state that is going to be so california is going to go for biden right right yeah okay so you know trump can't win there california is going to mm. burn before the election california okay. <laughs> <All right>. biden. <laughs> that's a call i'll call that one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but does that mean that the person who 54. votes for trump in california has no standing to complain about biden later no. Uh, that's, I mean, oh, that's that a is really the, good point. That like, is the, the implication. Is supposed to apply only to third parties, but it applies to being a Californian voting for Trump. Right. So, yeah, it, it, so it literally applies. Mm. 
it, much farther. Like that's why this this guy's logic is completely absurd. Matthew, you and I have a conundrum. We're we're in like the state everyone's looking at to make sure wins. We're in the swingest the of swingiest oh, states, dude. my man. I mean, we've been visited by both candidates at least more times than Saint Nick on the Twelve Nights of Christmas. <laughs> I don't know okay, but anyhow, <laughs> that, we've been visited a lot. So by that's the what we're going with. <laughs> Trump, <laughs> Trump's going to be wow, wow, in. Wow. <laughs> Trump's going to be in Lancaster uh, this Monday. I mean, yeah. that's that's how. I mean, this close to the election, and they're still coming to Pennsylvania trying to swing wow. it one way or another. So, I hear that's a really good educational opportunity for children to go visit. You should send your kids. You should send your kids. So there is an opportunity for all of us in uh, the swingiest of swing states to vote our may, conscience and may it. i rem, may i remind you though that uh that in in uh in 2013 at the christians for liberty conference there was another talk given by jason rink called the religion of statism where he uses imagery to demonstrate that the varying types of things that happen in our in our wonderful religious heritages include uh in, include things like you know we have preachers and sunday schools and you know indoctrination and revivals you know what's a revival yeah President campaign rally. <laughs> campaign rally is a revival, sir. Yeah, yeah. you're right. <laughs> so, hmm. just I'm just I'm just gonna communicate to you like this is what you're indoctrinating your children. It's with it's, it's as for. if our human hearts are just bent towards worshiping something, anything. <laughs> And so. in fact, and in fact, we should, man, it's like, that's such a great talk. I, I actually shared it with my minister this week uh, because he's, he actually was preaching on first Samuel eight last week uh, in the pulpit. It was, it was really good. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a great talk that J- Jason gave and he makes the point exactly as you did, Matthew, that we are created. He posits, and, and I think he's correctly so that we are created with a D- worship is in our DNA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's part of who we have to be. And whether that ends up be, being a worship of self yeah. or something, you know, akin to what we hear about in Sunday school, worshiping money or whatever, uh, yeah. or indeed uh, what is not talked about though, is of course the worship of the state. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Definitely. I would say the most dominant of religions of our day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, what would be a good antidote to that, right? I, there's a book for that anarchism yeah there's a book, there's a book for that. <laughs> this segment brought to you by faith seeking freedom a libertarian christian answer to tough questions can you say that in trump voice please okay listen i totally want you guys to go out there and pick up faith seeking freedom from the libertarian christian institute there's so many people everybody's reading this book carrie wrote some stuff doug wrote some stuff all the great people all the great people wrote stuff in this book and you gotta have it in your head are we winning that's it i tried to get there and i, I think we just got ourselves a book trailer guys uh yeah i need to i need to send that off that's to the right. guy who's building our book trailer all right Excellent. well i Excellent. i think we can wrap up here and want to and and i also it's have the most disturbing eye, of images camera, so i'm um, we'll wrap it here we'll wrap it up here and uh thank you guys for joining us we will see you i don't know maybe it'll be after the election maybe it won't be i guess it'll depend uh, and we may not even know after the emergency election. broadcast. Oh. Emergency. Maybe we'll there just we do this live. Uh, you know, the night of the election, just because. <laughs> because we can. Oh, we're, because we're, we can. Where no results will come in. Where no, no results, results will come in. in. We can just make fun of state. We could just <laughs> make fun of you know. We could. You, we, know, Matt, you could have sticky notes behind you for each state. We would be the only ones on TV not freaking out about anything. Oh yeah, he won. Okay, well he was good. <laughs> Actually, a parody would be great. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? I will leave. I will leave everybody with one of with, with this about voting. Comment if matter, you want to see that. No matter who you vote for, the government will win. Yeah, that, that's right. That's, that's right. right. <laughs>